Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having an awesome day. Why? Because we're going to be talking about some plants today. That's why. Uh, so, before we talk about the subject at hand, which is going to be carpeting for a low-tech tank and what I believe and from my own personal experience, what works the best with a non-CO2 tank. Um, but before we talk about that, first I have uh, several new subscribers and I do get behind on the on some of my subscribers because a lot of these videos are made in advance. Uh, so thank you to uh, Wowzer Bartok. He's, you have been very talkative and given me lots of conversations and you're actually really knowledgeable and have done a lot of research. Um, new subscriber, Callista. Uh, new subscriber, Craig Healy. Thank you so much. New subscriber, Theo Amedador. New subscriber, ER Uber. New subscriber, Carrie. New subscriber, Canine Feces. Thanks for joining us. And new subscriber, Oregano Daddy. I appreciate you all for joining us. Uh, some of you have made comments, some of you have not doesn't matter to me if I notice that you've subscribed you will get a hello from me whether you want to talk to me or not so congratulations I've called you out in front of everyone all right uh, so today what we are going to be talking about is um, I'm going to be carpeting this large 50 fallon, uh, 55 gallon tank in several different types of plants but the first one that we are going to talk about are what you can get at your local most um, known large uh, chain stores, uh, PetSmart, by Top Fin called Red Undulatas. Uh, now, there are, before we talk about what to do with this, because I'm going to show you what to do. Before we talk about what to do with that um, as a carpeting plant, um, I'm going to explain when it comes to a non CO2 tank, um, your options are really limited as to what you would carpet with. Um, my experience, it, you know, uh, Plants like uh, dwarf hair grass, Monte Carlo, um, dwarf tears, those those types of things are successful in a uh, non-CO2 tank if you're using a tank that's 10 gallons or smaller. And the reason for this is because the tanks aren't as deep, so they're closer to the light and there's more CO2 exchange happening whenever you have bubbles and uh, proper rotation going on. When you're dealing with a tank like this, I I, and I prefer larger tanks, I have several 40-gallon uh, breeders, um, and I, I never do CO2. You can be extremely successful, and I've pulled off plants that are said to be need CO2. Once, you've, once you figure out and know what you're doing, um, you can be successful with those types of plants, but that's another topic for another day. Now, I, you can also be successful in a non-CO2 tank carpeting with different types of stem plants. My problem with stem plants are, uh, like Repens makes a great um, carpeting plant, uh, which is a stem plant. Uh, Cardinals, uh, another stem plant, which can be great for carpeting as well. Bacopa. Um, my problem with those is that they don't stop growing. They they will eventually, no matter how deep it is, they will get very long and stringy, and you the maintenance on them is is a lot. You, I mean, every couple of weeks you're going to be going in there, snipping them, propagating them, bringing the tops down over and over and over and over, and then as they grow above being a carpeting plant, you're then having the, it's the upkeep I don't like. And my channel is all about trying. Uh, it is shooting for convenience. Now, um, I am going to be carpeting in several different types of crypts, but we're going to talk about red undulatas and uh, specifically doing tissue cultured uh, crypts. There is a huge reason why I prefer tissue cultured crypts as a carpeting plant over ones that you would buy, like at Dustin's Fish Tanks, uh, Aquarium Co-op, those big pla those big popular places. They don't do tissue cultured plants, um, and there is a big difference as to the size and how um, grassy and thick they become um, 
when they're tissue cultured, and I actually have both. I'm going to show you what uh, the difference between uh, what a tissue culture looks like fully matured as to one that you got that was, you know, grown, submerged, and you're receiving an adult um, through one of those larger chain stores. So, before we do that, let's get to the cleanup. Now, tissue cultured plants uh, have never been exposed to ammonia. They've never been exposed to bacteria of any kind, even beneficial bacteria. All they know is the agar, this gel stuff at the bottom, which is loaded with a lot of all the nutrients they need, you know, um, all, the, all the protein, all the just everything that they like. And the bag is loaded with a bunch of CO2 and oxygen and everything that they need. And, and they actually keep well. Like if you buy one and you're not ready to plant that day, they can live in these bags for several weeks and be just fine. Um, but also with tissue culture plants, what I like is that you get multiple plants. If I were to order a uh, red undulata, which is a red crypt, or you know some color of a bronze crypt, um, and you'll spend around the same price and you get just one. As opposed to when you get them tissue cultured, You'll notice when you take them apart, there's actually, there could be anywhere from three to five plants in here. So we'll open it up and be surprised. So always make sure your hands are extremely clean. Because like I said, these plants haven't been exposed to much. So first precaution I'm going to take, well, washing your hands is one. And yes, you do need to wash them even if you're going to use um, latex gloves. Because once your hands are submerged, the water is going to go into your gloves and... Um, you know and then get into your water column you know and if you're a smoker or anything like that or don't wash your hands after you use the restroom um, like my kids you know then you're gonna have some crud on there you don't want so wash your hands please uh, put on some gloves and uh, I'm gonna go the extra mile and put on a mask um, because I don't even want to breathe on these plants. That's how serious I'm taking this. So let me get my mask, and then we're going to go through the cleanup. Now, I do have some that are already resting, and they are resting in water that I grabbed from the tank that they're going in. So let me get my mask. All right. Yeah. This is a, extremely important that you mask up and glove up. All right, now, so now that I have my mask on, I feel like everything is safe and we're okay to start dealing with these plants. So let's go ahead and open them. All right. Oh, and uh, happy Halloween coming up to everybody. All right. So we've opened them. Here we are. Bag is now open. Now, I'm going to just let them slip out. All right. Oh, and some gel just came off. Sometimes this gel is really difficult to get off. So I'm going to lay this out flat. I do, and by the way, I do have a clean towel here I'm doing it on. And uh, you never want to just plant all of them just like this. You need to get an idea of how many plants you have. So I'll rest it in my hand like this. And then just kind of pick one and let it fold. I can see I have three plants. So what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to snip right in between each one get my water from the tank that it's going in so it can start getting acclimated to that drop it in now the reason we're putting it in water is because we're going to try to dissolve as much of this agar off of here as we possibly can all right here we are Drop into my water. 
drop into my water? All right. Oh, oh, uh, uh, hey, I should probably do a scary sound since I got a mask on. Burn! <laughs> Alright, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to torture you guys. That I'm going to make this video have a pause for a minute so I can let these soak and let that agar dissolve. And we'll go from there! Alright, we are back. I'm going to show you how to do some of this cleanup and then we're going to plant it. After we do that... I'm going to show you the difference between what a tissue cultured cryptocorn looks like and what looks like if it's been grown submerged. So, I pulled one out. And actually, just so you know, out of that second package, I got four plants. Bonus! Alright, so, as we see, I have... I had snipped, and you can see that there is a row of roots there. Those white roots are a good sign. It's pretty healthy. Now what I'll do is I, I keep kind of dipping it in the water and then where these roots are, I will then start to mush and see how they're kind of separating as I'm mushing. That's the agar slipping off. Oh, oh, couple roots slipped out. That's okay, those are the ones that were snipped in half. They will grow new roots, okay? They have, and they have a lot of roots. These are root feeders. So, um, secondly, you want to go through, trim any roots, and I talk about trimming roots all the time. But what this does is it triggers them to start absorbing as much nutrients as possible uh, to promote uh, fast and healthier growth. Um, and they just, they, they always seem to just acclimate to your tank much better than if you don't. I mean, even if you're just propagating one from one tank to another, trimming the roots does help. And I have noticed that when you get tissue cultured plants, they do not melt like the ones that you get that were fully grown submerged. Um, I have mentioned before that you may lose a couple leaves but they don't completely melt like the ones that were propagated and then sold to you that were grown submerged and the reason they are known for that melt is because crypts really dislike a change in atmospheres okay so you get one that was grown submerged clean it all up you know you take it out of the pot and whatnot and plant it and it all melts and dies and then you got to wait you know a month for it to start regrowing that's because it hated the entire process these on the other hand their first experience with water and uh, parameters and all of that are going to be the tank that you put them in and you do want to sustain the same type of atmosphere for them so I'll look through here very closely and look at any leaves that may be completely dead and with tissue culture plants you don't typically have any like very many weak or dying leaves so I'm going to you do not want to bury these below the waist and I do use soil and blasting sand and these plant in a blasting sand much better than any aquarium soil if you ever use um, uh, eco complete or uh, fluorite um, or uh, fluval you, you know, you'll notice that there's a problem that they want to keep plop, you know, floating out. That did not happen with uh, blasting sand. Um, and you don't want to plant them uh, above the base, which is right here. So just this portion is going to go in the sand. So I've got it. I'm going to pinch it. And I've already actually got a few going in the back here if I can get my finger there they are so I'm only planting these like about an inch apart um, so let's stick it in there hopefully you can see this What's happening, Adam? Nothing. 
Oh, okay, mom's taking a nap. Thanks for telling me, man. Appreciate it. All right, I've got it in there, and I'm going to let you take a closer look here in a second. So let me take my gloves off, and uh, I'll let you have a look. And But first, I'm going to show you what a full-grown um, red crypt looks like when it's been tissue cultured, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it was propagated and grown, submerged from another company. All right, so here we are. This right here is a full-grown red undulata. Look at how grassy and thick and and dense and full it looks. Now this one's this one's a year old. It's four inches tall. That's about as big as it's going to get. Now let me show you what they look like in comparison when you get them non-tissue um, cultured and you bought it in a pot. Here's the one in a pot. See how much long and stringy the stems look and it doesn't really look like grass or you know something you'd want to carpet a tank with they also get taller whereas these were going to get a, get you know eight inches tall <clears throat> these grow about half that so I have two right here but I'm going to do the whole thing uh, well the whole back of this tank with um, red undulatas that you can get at PetSmart, which are really cheap. $9 for, you know, three to five plants. I'm going to go all the way across the back with these. Now, I have more plant videos coming up as to what I'm going to be putting up front uh, here. Give me un momento, por favor. All right, we're back. So I have just a few more things to say about it, and then uh, we'll uh, call it a day. Um, so let me explain to you why there is a difference between the tissue cultured and their sizes uh, between getting some that were already pre-grown underwater and you're getting them in the little pots. Now, what happens when they're tissue cultured, um, from my personal experience and what I know, is that um, it does cause you do get really good looking plants by the way um, they it causes dwarfism for whatever for whatever reason I've noticed that it causes dwarfism now there are some youtubers that don't like tissue culture plants there they'll they'll say oh they melt off and you get these puny weird looking leaves that grow in their place and they're not melting off. What what happens is is if you try to plant a tissue cultured plant that already has fish in there, like omnivores, like mollies, um, endlers, uh, guppies. When they're that small, uh, when they come out, they'll get eaten. And when they get eaten like that, the plant will grow, but the leaves come out for some reason. The leaves come out extremely thin and awkward looking. Um, and I take my time in this hobby, so, um, and I deal with a lot of tetras also, I, uh, that's my new, new thing. Uh, most of my tanks now, besides my um, shrimp tanks, are all schools of uh, tetras. And this big tank I'm going to be doing, we'll talk about that later, but I'm going to be putting some larger, a school of larger fish in this one. Uh, but yeah, with the tissue cultures, they just, they just come out grassier, bushier, they don't grow as tall, and there's no maintenance. You, you don't have to keep going in and and trimming them and replanting them and you know and all of that and if you've got a dirted tank like this this is perfect because although stem plants are easy to propagate and all of that they don't need a soil substrate they can live just off of the water column and you doing liquid ferts and I don't like liquid ferts either liquid ferts cause all kinds of problems and that'll be a video for another day uh, but anyway I hope that you found this helpful and I do hope that you consider uh, doing a carpeting tank like this. And when I get this full with red undulatas all the way across, because I do have a lot more to go, um, I plan on probably putting about 30 all the way across the back, and then I get a whole other deal in the front. And yeah, I'm going to do nothing but a crip, crip carpet in here. I don't want any of my plants getting above 4 inches because I want a lot of room in my tank for these larger fish to grow, uh, to have extra room to grow, and... Um, for spawning purposes also, I'm going to be putting some egg scatterers in there, etc. But anyway, that's all I have to say. If I forgot to mention anything that you were worried about, 
please drop a comment. I don't ignore anyone on my channel. If you say anything, literally anything, like hello or F you, I'll still say thanks for dropping by. And with that said, I hope everyone had a fantastic day. And if you're having a bad day, get up and do something about it. You don't got to sit there dwelling in your crud. All right. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for swinging by. Thanks again to all my new subscribers.